Good morning. It's good to see everybody here this morning on this Independence Day. All you independent people out there, I know. But uh, we are glad that you have come to worship with us today, whether you are here in person or online, and just um, invite you to, uh, to be with us in spirit as we celebrate this Day of Freedom. We are grateful for those that have given so much that we might enjoy these freedoms because it is a special country that we live in, and so we are grateful for God planting us here. So let's turn our hearts to God in prayer. Gracious God, send your Spirit on us gathered here, whether we are in person or remotely. Help us to, to hear your voice in our lives. Free us from the things that bind us. Free us so that we might be your children your children in grace and in love. Bring us together today, O God, so that we are one, one in your spirit, made holy in you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, Ann. And so, if you would, please join me in our responsive reading uh, from Psalm 48, 1 through 3. And so, in the city belonging to our God, the Lord is great and so worthy of praise. Mount Zion in the far north is the city of the great king. God is in his fortification, revealing himself in the place of safety. And so, oh, there went one of my God sightings. I just wanted to throw that out there. And so, uh, uh, now's the time when we get to, uh, to share our God sightings with, with each other. And um, so... Uh, Word on the street is Ann Steele is cancer-free. Boom. That's a big celebration right there. Uh, we're thankful for the uh, showers this week that made everything grow again. Aren't we? Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, uh, you, you know, even if we have a little bit of grass to cut now and then. And then, um, and also uh, grateful for the musical, uh, the 
ensemble from Franklin first last week that played the, the handbells. Uh, I was able to watch it back online, and it was, uh, it was pretty amazing. So I know that they must have been even better in person. And then, um, so uh, both Linda and Betty, I think, got to talk to Emmeline on the phone this week. And she's doing well, so that's really good news to hear. So uh, that's a God sighting for sure. And then uh, Dee Dee's niece, uh, niece's baby is doing well, so that's great news. And uh, just the beauty of the morning and the flowers. And then um, uh, Ken Jones also mentioned that uh, some uh, flowers from the bulbs that, that Oz Waters gave him have bloomed. And like so many of the flowers around this church you know, are blooming and bringing, continuing to bring beauty in, in to our church and to our whole community. So that's a God sighting for sure. And I um, uh, wanted to turn to some uh, prayer requests because we do have some prayer requests. Uh, most of you have gotten an email about uh, Mark Payne, who is in the hospital, who's had a lot of blood loss. He's still there at Mission. And... Um, uh, probably should be there through the weekend. Hopefully, I've not talked to Margaret today, but hopefully he'll be able to come home uh, tomorrow. So please keep him in your prayers. And then uh, Karen Litton uh, broke her ankle in Texas and uh, is in a long recovery process because it sounds like it was broken pretty bad. Uh, and then uh, Sam's sister, uh, Mary Lou uh, Manus, uh, is having health issues as well. And then uh, we also want to keep those that are being affected, like in the Caribbean and also in Florida coming up uh, with uh, uh, the storm, whether it's a tropical storm or a hurricane or uh, whatever it is, it's uh, liable to have a, a strong impact on our, on our country. And then uh, also those that, uh, along with that, those that are doing the rescue on the condo that collapsed down in Florida for... Uh, uh, that they're able to do their job and um, uh, just in the midst of all this tragedy. So please keep them in your prayers. So let's, uh, let's turn our hearts to God in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for this day that you have made. The beauty of your creation, the glory of the mountains that surround us, the fireworks from last night, just all the beauty that that is here in this place. They give us just a little glimpse of you and, and your gracious love for us. They remind us of your beauty, that you reign in beauty, O oh God. O oh God, shine your beauty down on us and help us to keep our eyes open for those times when we desperately need to just get a glimpse of hope in you because life does weigh us down. There is, uh, there's hurt in body, mind, and spirit all around the world, O oh God. There are things that, that terrify us. There are things that keep us from, from fully living out our lives as your children, to fully living in grace, to fully loving our neighbor. O oh God, bring your healing to us. Bring your healing to our community. Bring your healing to our world in body, mind, and spirit today and every day. Help us to be your children of grace. O oh God, we've lifted up many prayer requests this morning, but still there are other things that are on our hearts that we lift up now to you as well. For these and many things that have been left unsaid, hear our prayers. Hear the prayers of your children. Hear the prayers of those that long to hear your voice, to be healed by you. Be with us this day and, and every day throughout our lives, reminding us that we are yours and you are ours. And help us to live out the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. share with you a song of hope and celebration and joy and uh, it's called love lifted me it's not in the methodist hymnal but john wesley will forgive us <laughs> Thanks, guys. That was great. And so today we're starting for the next few weeks uh, sort of an Olympic theme with the Olympics coming up. And, um, uh, of course, we've got a, a little uh, local star, rising star, that's uh, going to participate this year. She's at the World Championships right now. Uh, over in Slovenia, but uh, gets to compete this next week, and then she's off to Tokyo. So uh, little uh, Evie Leapfarth is, uh, it's going to be really fun to watch her journey as she uh, begins her Olympic journey. That's going to be a multiple Olympic journey, I'm, I'm convinced. So uh, 
no matter how well she does this year, we're pretty excited to, to kind of watch her in the future. So that's inspired other things uh, uh, to talk about this, this summer. You know, because we're all good at certain things, right? And we're good at different things. Uh, I, I used to be really good at eating. Now, I... <laughs> Not as much anymore. I have to, since the metabolism's changed over the years, as some of you might have noticed too, maybe not. But um, I used to be really good at eating. You know, two and a half pizzas, no problem. And we're not talking about these little personal pan pizzas. We're talking about pizza. And uh, so I could eat with the best of them. I could put it away. So this one time, has anybody heard of Farrell's Ice Cream Place? Been to a fault? Yeah, right? Those places are the Yeah, they are the bomb. And so um, I haven't been to one in years. So they've got this this one dessert. They they kind of specialize in ice cream and desserts and stuff like that. Um, they've got this one dessert called the pig's trough. Uh-huh, uh-huh, getting a head nod. So for those of you who have never been to a Farrell's or, or doesn't know what that is, a pig's trough is basically so you've got a banana split, right? So you take two banana splits, put them together. All right, now, they've got this little tin pan, you know, that they, that they put it in, but then it's in this little wooden trough-looking thing, you know, so thus, the pig's trough, right? And uh, so I went into Farrell's. We'd been out running around, carrying on one day. I don't even remember, but we went to Farrell's. It was my first time ever going there, and they had this pig's trough. I went, oh, that sounds good. And so they brought, that, uh, brought it out, and I, you know, just was talking to my buddies and ate it and didn't even think anything about it. And they're like, so then they all came out singing and dancing and carrying on, and it's like, woo, ate the pig's trough, you know, sort of thing. And I'm like, well, shoot, what would you do if I'd eat another one? <laughs> and then I did. <laughs> I was good at eating. <laughs> and, you know, it's those that's a lot of bananas, I'm telling you. You know, a lot of ice cream, a lot of bananas. Do you know that the average human actually eats more bananas than monkeys? It's true. I can't remember the last time I ate a monkey. I, no, I don't, looking at some of your faces, maybe y'all have had more than I have, but, you know, in, in general, I, I think that's, that's pretty true. And so, um, so this Sunday we, we begin this... Uh, this Olympic theme, and so today's uh, theme is is fulfilling our destiny or finding our destiny, right? And so, what a better place and a better time to talk about that in the land of the free and home of the brave, here in the good old United States of America. We do have a lot more opportunities. There's no doubt we have more opportunities to to be able to use our our uh, God given uh, gifts. To, uh, to take advantage of some, some opportunities to, to really do good things in the world, I believe. We've got a lot of options, maybe that some other places don't have. You know, I'm thinking of our connection with the folks in Haiti, right? That no matter how, you know, talented they, they are, you know, they're limited in what they're, how they're able to use their gifts, and so we're really blessed here in the United States with the freedoms to be able to do that and, and all the other resources. But still, it's a, it's a great place to chase our dreams. And there's, all, you know, there's always a way that we can chase our dreams, no matter where we are. But I, again, I think because of the freedoms that we have here in the U.S., we can pursue them just a little bit more. And so it's a place where we can fulfill our destiny at the fullest, I believe. Now, I, I think there's a lot of ways that you can interpret destiny. Is it a way that we're locked in? I, I don't think so. I think it's more a matter of how do we use our passions to fully become the person that God really wants us to be, right? To become children of God so that others might see God through us because if it's not for us, some people might never see Jesus, right? If they don't see Jesus in us, then they might never know God's love. And so I think it's important for us to, to live into our destiny that way. 
You know, I think our passions help drive our destiny. For me, the passion of paddling allowed me to see and go places and do things that I definitely couldn't have done otherwise. <laughs> to remember that I was the only Boy Scout in the whole uh, troop that didn't have his canoe and merit badge to go on and compete in the Olympics then, that's just, it's kind of mind-blowing if you think about it. I mean, where else could you do something like that? And then sure enough, I go to s this summer camp that I dearly loved, and one of the things that they did was do whitewater canoeing. Well, everybody had to do it, right? It's part of staff training. And I thought, oh, this is kind of cool. River does a lot of your work for you. You do little rapids. It's kind of fun. You have snakes falling in your canoe. It's great. I, no lie, my first time on the river in a canoe, uh, me and my partner um, kind of bumped up against a tree as we were kind of waiting, like at the very start. We'd been in the water five or ten minutes, right? We bump up against a tree, and of course this black snake or, I don't know, some kind of a water snake, some kind of snake, you know, kind of harmless anyway, is sitting up sunning itself on the tree going, this is pretty nice. And then some random canoe bumps into the tree, and the snake's like, whoa, and falls into the canoe, right? So what do we do? Bah, snake! Well, you know, I grew up around snakes, so I just kind of picked it up and threw it in the water. But uh, my uh, partner wasn't as thrilled with having a snake in the canoe as, as I was. And she's going, ah, snake. So where's the snake go? Ah, people. All right. So creating more excitement. And we got that sorted out, but then we just, you know, went on downstream. So I went, oh, this is kind of interesting. I might like this sport. And so that developed into other things and other things. It became a passion and, and something that I uh, uh, got pretty good at. And so uh, I think this country allows us to do that. It allows us really to kind of take our passions and, and uh, really expand on them and, and uh, take advantage of some opportunities that maybe we wouldn't have in, in other countries. You know, I think Jesus uh, recognized that he had a destiny, that he had this passion, this drive, that he wanted to show people what God was really about, right? And so in our, our scripture lesson today, he, this, is, this is where he told people, this is the reason I'm here. This is my destiny. And so it was very clear from the start what Jesus was here for. Let, let me read this, this uh, passage from Luke to you. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news about him spread throughout the whole countryside. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. Jesus went to Nazareth, where he had been raised. On the Sabbath, he went uh, to the synagogue, as he normally did, and stood up to read. The synagogue assistant gave him the scroll from the prophet Isaiah. Jesus unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind, to liberate the oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the synagogue assistant and sat down. Every eye in the synagogue was fixed on him. He began to explain to them, Today, this scripture has been fulfilled just, have you, just as you have heard it. And so Jesus gave them his mission statement right there, right up front. In where? His hometown. In Nazareth. So let's, let's take a, a peek at this real quick and and, and Jesus says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Why? And then he goes down the list. He goes down the list to, to tell people why the Spirit of the Lord was upon him or what would come of that, right? What passion would drive him to, be, to reach his destiny? So first we hear to preach good news to the poor, to give hope to those that just don't have any hope. I'm reminded of our friends in Haiti, of those that, 
that just struggle to have hope. Certainly we have others in our community here that just live day to day really without a lot of hope. So how do we help them find that? Jesus would say, it's going to be okay. God is with you. He would proclaim release to the prisoners. In first glance at that, we would think, okay, he's going to release the people behind the bars, right? But we remember that there are many things that hold us prisoner, right? There are many things that control our lives. There are many things that keep us from fully fulfilling our destiny as God's children. To live in grace and to, to, to share God's love with everyone. Mm. We're prisoners by many things. And Jesus said, we are free on this day of freedom we are reminded that in Jesus, we are free. He gave sight to the blind. He healed those that, wherever he went, the first thing that Jesus did was to, was to start healing people, to start giving them new lives, to be able to get up and move around where they could see, where they couldn't see, really, or couldn't hear, couldn't walk, couldn't just be around people because of some physical malady that they had. The first thing Jesus did was go in and heal those people. Oftentimes on his way into town, he would stop off at somebody who was crippled and say, stand and walk. Let's go into town. Enjoy your new life. And he liberated the oppressed the last, the least, and the lost, Jesus cared for. He had invited them to his table, which kind of got on the nerves of some of the religious leaders of the day. They often didn't like that, and they gave Jesus a hard time about it. Why are you bringing these sinners to the table? And then what did Jesus usually say? I invited you, didn't I? Yep, been there. And so Jesus invited all to his table. And then he came to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. That God loves us all. That God cares for us. And that God wants us to live lives filled with freedom. Does that mean the, the whole story is rosy and just wonderful? Everything is sunshine. No, because if we, if we keep reading the story, it, it sounds pretty good at first, right? Because Jesus is, is saying these things, and, and a lot of the local people there, he's in his hometown, Nazareth, right? And, and, and they're going, that's my boy right there. I, I know Jesus. I know his brother. Yeah, we go way back. But it wasn't long, was it? If we're familiar with the story, before they got aggravated at Jesus and then ran him out of town because they just didn't have the faith to believe how Jesus wanted them to live. It was... It was one thing to hear these words, but it's another thing to live them, isn't it? It's a whole nother thing to live them. But Jesus challenged them to share in his passion, to love the least, the last, and the lost. Jesus is the Holy One that brings life to those that struggle to have lives filled with hope. And you know what? He calls us to share in that destiny. He calls us to live as children of God. 
to live out this mission with Jesus as he proclaimed through the Spirit. How might that look for us today? How might we live as children of God? Even for Jesus, it wasn't always easy. Even for Jesus, he had his detractors. But that even in this, God is with us. God will sustain us. And God will strengthen us in our times of weakness. Independence Day, it's about freedom. Following Jesus is about freedom. It's about freedom from the things that hold us back. Freedom from the things that separate us from God's love. What is holding you back today from God's love? And so today we celebrate communion. Those of you here uh, probably have your little to-go cups with you for communion. If you're at home watching, uh, you can either hit pause or come back and uh, or go get uh, something to, uh, to eat and drink and then enjoy this with us. And so if you would, I think David's going to bring our liturgy up in-house and online, and then you can follow along with me. So the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away, and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word in Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. And when supper was over, he took the cup and gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us 
gathered here and around the world. And on these gifts of bread and cup, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And so we invite you now to partake of the elements as you remember Jesus' ultimate love for you. And so as we go from this place today, may we go remembering our freedoms. Remembering the freedom and and grateful for those that have paid so much. So that we might have freedom, that we might live in this country filled with incredible opportunities to live out our passions and pursue our destiny. And may we remember as we go from this place that our destiny is to be lived out as children of God sharing love and grace with all those around us. May we do that and go in peace. Amen.